And now, the Mole Mystery Theater. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Go on, Mr. Hudson. It's... Well, it's my wife and Judd. They spend a great deal of time together alone. Oh, of course, we're all old friends. That's why I never suspected anything. But if I ever find out that he and Julie... We must re resist these violent impulses. Humanity is frail. We must resign ourselves and seek the strength of unity with infinity. Can you help me, Dr. Jericho? You must come to see me whenever this anger seizes you, my friend. I... I've got to do something, something. You said that night there was someone there with murder in his heart. At first I thought it was Judd. And perhaps that's still true. But now I know whom you really meant. It was I. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of Dr. Discord. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of the Mystery Theater's presentation of Dr. Discord, starring Martin Gable and Everett Sloan. I must say you look mighty pleased with yourself, Judd. I am. I just sold Tim's design to Miller and Company. I didn't tell him I was taking it there. I didn't want him to get his hopes all up and then be disappointed. I'm sure Mrs. Hudson will be pleased. Oh, Lola. We're going to have a party to celebrate a surprise for Tim. He's been down in the mouth about something lately, and this ought to cheer him up. You and Mrs. Hudson must have had a ducky time fixing it. Well, I'm sorry I can't be there. Lola, for the last time... I am sorry you can't make it. You're going, anyway? Yes, of course. Of course. You couldn't disappoint June Hudson. And Jim Hudson. I see. You might as well leave now, Chuck. Why? Because I'm beginning to hate the sight of you, that's why. And you can take this ring with you. Just what am I supposed to do with it? Anything you like. Why don't you give it to her? Mr. Hudson. Yes, Miss Davis. It's why I came for Mr. Corbett, but he's left for the day. All right, I'd better have a look at it. But, Miss Davis, we've never had any dealings with Miller and Company, have we? Not that I know of, Mr. Hudson. Hmm. Thank you. That's all, Miss Davis. Yes, Mr. Hudson. Mr. Judson Corbett, your design's a knockout. <laughs> His design. This wire confirms our phone call of yesterday. The deal is set. <laughs> okay, John. So you did try it at last. You tried to go behind my back, steal my design, just as you're trying to steal June from me. Dr. Jericho was right. He was so right. Judd, may I come in? Well, it's rather late, Please, Laura. Judd. Well, of course. <clears throat> I'll come right to the point. I suppose I should be sorry about last night. Well, I am sorry I lost my temper, but I want to get one thing straight. You are throwing me over, aren't you? Yes or no? Well, you broke the engagement, Lola. I didn't. It suits you fine, yes? No, I'm not happy about it, Lola. Well, let's face it, you'd be even more suspicious of me after we were married. 
What kind of a marriage would we have if you were constantly nagging at me? It'd be no good. No good for both of us. Now, be a good girl. Relax. I'll make us a cocktail. I'm trying to be sensible, Lola. Help me, will you? Shall we talk about something else? The weather, your business? This brass thing here on the table, Judd. Is that the new flat iron design? Yes, it'll sell. It's good. It's heavy. Well, that's only the model. Well, here, let's have a drink, huh? Wash everything away with a diker, just like that, eh? Well, I'm sorry, Lola, but you know yourself we wouldn't have been happy. I hope we'll always be friends, Lola. No. No, I've loved you, and you did love me once. You're throwing me over for June Hudson. Dr. Jericho was right. You're trying to tear me apart to kill me inside. Dr. Jericho was right all along. Lola, Lola, put that thing You're down. You're a cheat and a liar! Lola, no, you can't just lie! No! Chuck. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Judd, I want it. What happened to you? Jim, call the doctor for me. Somebody was here. Yes, I'll say somebody was here. Somebody who thinks about as much of you as I do. Jim, later, this is no time for that stuff. Call the doctor. Uh, how does it feel to have your brains knocked out, Jim? You've been stealing my brains for years, Judd. How does it feel? Who did it? None of your business. I know who did it. Too bad she didn't finish the job. It's what I came to do. Lola finally saw through you, too. Hmm? You're crazy. Get out of here. Use the brass flat iron model, huh? What were you going to use to kill me with, Judd? How were you going to do it, oh, Judd? Have a name, Jim. This is going to be easier than I thought. Just leave that iron alone, Tim. A fitting instrument of death, Judd. My brain devised, designed, created it. Your brains were planning to steal it, just as you tried to steal June from me. Everything's just as Dr. Jericho said, so I came here to kill you before you got me. All I have to do is finish the job Lola started. You fool, you crazy fool, put that down! This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Dr. Discord. It's... It's so horrible about poor Judd. I, I can't believe he's dead. Things like that happen, June. We're in the papers every day. Tim, how can you talk that way about Judd? Our oldest friend. Stop it! Oh, Lola must have gone completely out of her mind. What'll happen to her, Tim? Life imprisonment, perhaps? I, I don't know. But she couldn't have been responsible for her actions, Tim. She couldn't have been. Perhaps... Perhaps what? She couldn't have done it, Tim. Well, she confessed. Yes, but she's hysterical, deranged. They had a quarrel. Maybe the truth will come out later, Tim. Maybe there's someone who knows the real truth. But who could know? Except Judd, who's dead, and the murderer. Who could know, June? I don't know. Only I think... What? What do you think? Somehow I think Dr. Jericho now. Yes? Dr. Jericho, I must see I you. I see nobody today. But I have to my see you. My assistant is out. He makes all my appointments. But it's... Oh, I... I... Good day. No, I... I'm coming in to see you whether you like it or not. Mr. Hudson, if you don't leave, I'll call the police. If you haven't already, sit down. I'm sorry. I but... said sit down. One doesn't argue if one's visitor has a gun. You know too much for your own good, Dr. Jericho. I know only what is truth. How is it you haven't gone to the police? You're referring to the unfortunate predicament of Miss Forza. You knew there would be a murder. You said so in the beginning. Yes, I did. And you know now the police have the wrong person. You alone know. The wrong person? I've read about extrasensory perception, but until I met you, I didn't believe in it. Yet weeks ago, you predicted I would commit murder, and you were right. What? You knew I would kill him even before I knew it myself. You killed him? I can't let you live, Doctor. Wait a minute. 
You think that I knew that I would go to the police? That's why I must kill you. No, no, you're mistaken. I know nothing, nothing. I don't believe but you. But you must. I'm a fake, don't you see? A charlatan. Naturally, you say that now, but you've demonstrated well, your abilities too well. I'm sorry, but it's your life or mine. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. I know nothing, man. Can't you get that through your head? I make a living out of fools like you, that's all. It's no use. You. you think I know what's in your minds, but I know nothing, nothing until you tell me. I may try to act as if I didn't know. I may say, uh, uh, somebody here is betraying someone who trusts him, or somebody has murder in his heart. Some such, uh, absurd statement as that. Is it my fault if you all come rushing to me with your checkbooks outstretched, clamoring and insisting that the shoe fits? No, you knew. You knew all along. Now listen to me, you idiots. It's you people who accuse yourselves, all of you. Then... <laughs> Please don't. I'm a fake, I tell you, a fake. I don't believe you. Ah, fake. Must get out of here. Get away. Joan. I followed you, Tim. You followed? No, no, you can't come in here. I don't have to, Tim. I heard. You? What did you hear? You killed Judd. No. Jericho was a fake, Tim. I know. Judd did nothing, believe me. But my design... Judd sold it as a surprise for you. I know. No. No, you're wrong, June. Judd was trying to... Jim, look. Read this. What is it? A letter Judd wrote me two days before he died. Letter? Tim doesn't know I sold his design for him. Surprise birthday gift. Cheer him. Oh, God. Oh, dear God. Tim, what are you going to do about Lola? Well, Tim? Tim, she's innocent. You can't let her... It's all right, June. I'm calling the police. I confess. But the real murderer is dead. It's Dr. Jericho. Dr. Jericho? No... Dr. Discord. This is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's mystery theater presentation of Dr. Discord. The original music for the Mystery Theater was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Any similarity between the names and characters used on this show and any actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. And now this is Dan Seymour reminding you to tune in next Tuesday over another network when the Mystery Theater presents another exciting mystery adventure. Remember, starting next Tuesday, June 29th, the Mystery Theater will be heard over another network. Consult your local newspaper for the exact time and station.